Hey guys, this is Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be talking about the exceptions to the octet rule. The octet rule is the idea that atoms are most stable when they have eight electrons around them. And for the most part, that's true, but there are exceptions. And these exceptions can be broken down into three big categories. The first category is are the molecules in which there are a number of valence electrons. For example, if we were to look, take a look at NO2, the total number of valence electron here is 17. I got that because nitrogen has five valence electrons plus the two oxygens which have six valence electrons each, giving us a total of 17. And then when you draw the structure out, it ends up looking like this with the lone pairs around the oxygens and then one electron around the nitrogen. And then from the structure you can see that the oxygens have eight valence electrons around them, two, four, six, eight. This oxygen also has eight electrons around them, two, four, six, eight. But the nitrogen in the middle only has seven valence electrons. When if you have an odd number of valence electrons, there's no way that every single atom in the molecule is going to have an even number or octet. So with an odd number of valence electrons at least one of the atoms are going to be electron deficient. It's going to have less than eight valence electrons. So that's the first category. The second category, there are atoms which tend to have less than an octet. And the most common atom are boron, which tends to have six, tends to have six electrons around it instead of eight. And then beryllium, which tends to have four electrons around it instead of eight. So an example of a compound that contains boron is BH3, and then when you draw the structure out, it looks like this. And you can see that boron only has six electrons around it instead of eight. And the reason why is because boron only has three valence electrons, so it just doesn't have enough electrons to form four bonds to get to an octet. And then an example containing beryllium is BEH2, and the structure for that looks like like this, and you can see beryllium only has four electrons around it. Actually, the entire row, or the entire group uh, that boron's in, tends to only have six electrons around it instead of eight. All right, and then the last category, there are certain atoms that can exceed the octet rule, that can have more than eight valence electrons around them, or eight electrons around them, and those are the atoms, or the elements, in the third row or lower. So any element in the third row or lower can exceed the octet rule and have more than eight electrons around it. So an example of that would be I3 minus. When you draw out this structure, it looks like this with the iodine have the iodines on the end having six uh six six lone electrons around it, and then the iodine in the middle having three lone pairs. And you can see that the iodines on the very end, they have eight valence electron eight electrons around it, but the iodine in the middle has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons around it. So this iodine has exceeded the octet rule. And the reason why I is capable of doing so or any of the elements that's in the dirt row or lower is capable of doing so is because starting at the dirt energy level, there are D orbitals available. And those D orbitals can accommodate the extra electrons. And there you have it. Those are the three ex categories of exceptions to the octet rule. And they are when you have an odd number of valence electrons in the molecule, or there's certain atoms that just have less than eight electrons around them, like boron and beryllium. And then there's certain ele elements that can have more than eight valence electrons. Those are the elements in the third row and lower. Hopefully that made sense, and then if you had any questions, leave a comment below, and then I'll address it. And then if you found this video to be helpful, give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe to the channel, because I'll be posting up tons and tons of videos throughout the semester that will help you conquer chemistry and just do better in chemistry. All right, keep practicing, and I'll see you next time.